Hey everybody, happy Memorial Day weekend. Captain CA here with Flats Class YouTube. I'm returning from one trip and getting ready to go on another, but the trip I returned from was a trip down to Southwest Florida where I stayed at the Tarpon Lodge and I fished with Captain Cody Pierce. Uh, we did an episode for Flats Class TV where we went snook fishing and uh, uh, doing something that I like to do, throwing hard baits up against the mangrove shorelines there. And when I returned to the lodge one night, I had a group of gentlemen that were kind of like checking out the boat and uh, they noticed that I wasn't using loop knots on my plugs. And they're like, why is that? And I was like, let me, let me show you something. And I'm about to show you too. Let's come over to my other boat and we'll talk about it. Okay, Lag Tackle fans, um, here's where we're going to go against the grain a little bit. It is a common misnomer or, I guess, belief uh, in the industry, in the, in the light tackle game, that if you're throwing a plug or you're throwing a jig, you always have to have a loop knot. And there are exceptions to it, naturally, when you tie to a swivel or if you tie to a plug that has a split ring on the nose or if you're tying to you know a special piece of terminal tackle such as the snake locks from z-man or the texas eye from z-man of course you can tie a clench knot but generally speaking if you listen to most pros they will tell you that they tie a loop knot on on most jigs and on most plugs to give the plug more action so for instance here's a Here's a top water plug, which is a perfect example where you would employ a loop knot. And let me free it up a little bit here for you. And I'll show you what I mean. So by employing a loop knot, for those of you that don't know, that's just a small dime size or eraser size knot uh, at the front of the plug. And it gives this bait a hinging effect where it can walk, wide walks, have a lot of freedom of movement, and very enticing for fish to strike this plug. That's perfect if you're in open water casting scenarios, throwing to potholes, you know, working plugs like this over oyster bars. That's kind of what the loop knot's all about. Loop knot is not for this scenario. The scenario that I just had with Captain Cody Pierce, the water keeper, we were throwing to mangrove shorelines, okay? with the water rising and leaving just a little bit of room in there. And then there's naturally these holes and stuff like that between bushes that you can drive a cast into and you'll hit the water and then your plug kind of takes a weird, like almost tumble and goes a little further back in there. So that's the goal is for me to make sidearm casts and skip it in there. Whether you're using casting gear or spinning gear does not matter. Um, but by doing that, when it hits the water and does that tumble, many times if you're using a loop knot what happens is you see how the how the line the leader is so free it just hangs straight down well what happens is the front hook of the plug will do that it'll go in there and it'll just get hung up so when that front treb now this works for trebs you can tie a loop knot if you're skipping a jig in there or a texas rig jig but for plugs it will get hung up a lot it fouls all the time and it's frustrating really frustrating uh, and then you're also now you're going to be pulling a fish out with a much weaker uh, knot. And these are all 40s. I use a lot of 40 this time of year because of the snook. So what I do, and you know, not everyone does this, but I have found that I don't foul if I use, let me create some slack here so you can see. Let me just lean this up here. You see how this is limp line. You see how much further, almost wire-like, that that leader sticks out there? See how it just kind of boop? And you know why? That's a five-turn improved clench knot. So I do five turns like a uni knot and then come back through the other way one time. And it gives me that stiffness that I'm looking for. That way, when I skip this bait in there and it 
flies in there and goes out a weird tumbling action and gives me an extra two or three feet under the mangrove limb, well, it starts to waffle down and it's not fouled. N almost never foul. Like one out of every 100 casts might foul. What the fish sees is he's way over here, like deeper in the mangrove maybe, and he sees skip, skip, and then this bait just kind of waffles down in the water like that. Well, I give it one hard kick without reeling and it makes a little flash and then the bait starts to waffle again. And then is when I start twitch, throw slack, twitch, throw slack, twitch, throw slack. Why am I throwing the tip back toward the mangrove shoreline and the plug? Because that is my action that I'm trying to create that side to side, just like I would have with a loop knot but I'm reeling slower and I'm still getting that good flash. I've already kind of like teased that snook that's sitting under the limbs where he saw the skip, he saw the waffle down, he saw the first hard kick. I let it waffle a little bit more. Now he's had time to move toward it and then it looks like it's trying to get away and he follows it out. Now he doesn't hit it every time, but it works a lot. So if you're looking for something where you're gonna have a stronger knot, you're gonna have less fouling with it, Try just putting a five turn improved clinch knot on the front of your plugs, especially when you're fishing cover. You can do this as well in open water. If you're one of those folks that are fishing with limper line, like 15 or 20 pound leader, and it's always getting caught up. If you employ that twitch, twitch, throw the slack back, twitch, twitch, throw the slack back, you don't have to tie a loop knot to have a lot of success with a mirror lure. That's all I got for you today. I thought it would be a handy little tip as we go into the Memorial Day weekend. Many of you will be out there, including me, catching fish. If you like what you're seeing here on Flats Class 2 YouTube, ugh, easy for me to see, and you're learning stuff, come over here and push the button. You push that button and we make it to 50,000 subs uh, sometime in the near future. We're going to take this channel to a whole nother level. And I look forward to bringing you even more uh, how-to info on a daily basis. Till next time, Captain CA signing off.